Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Jordan, and I'm back with another drawing video. In this video, we're going to be looking at some of my really old drawings, the really embarrassing ones, which I don't really want to show anyone, but I'm doing it for some reason. At least you guys will have a laugh at it, get something out of it. Jesus Christ. But also having a look at my more recent artworks, doing a bit of a showcase of my 2016 drawings, and I guess just showing you guys the progress that I've made. The whole point of this video is to really show you guys that skill comes from practice. You're not just born a great artist, you have to put in a lot of work. Speaking of skill, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. I'm sorry for the really lame transition, but I had to do it. Skillshare is a really cool website which you can go to to pretty much learn anything. It has got so much content on there from drawing tutorials, Photoshop tutorials, to creating music or writing. It's got so much stuff. I think there's over 13,000 different classes. So pretty much anything you could hope to learn I'm sure you'll find it there. I've got a special promo code for you guys where you get two free months. So I definitely recommend you check it out to see if you like it. If you do, you can sign up for a premium membership for as little as $8 a month, I believe. And you get access to all the videos. You don't have to pay per video. You get everything. So as much as you want to learn, you can learn. I think it's a really cool resource. I like the fact that you can learn from home. You don't have to travel anywhere to some art classes and talk to people you don't like. I'm just a really antisocial person. I don't like people. The promo code is in the video description, so get your two free months and let's get on with the video. All right. Look at these beautiful drawings. The proportions are all on point. The line work is clean. Jesus. Oh God. Kids don't do drugs. This is the final result. I don't even think I was that young when I did this. I have a feeling I was around 15, possibly. I don't think I spent very long on those sketches, but they were still really bad. On to another beautiful sketchbook. The top one looks like a Powerpuff Girl, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't meant to. <laughs> I obviously really struggled with proportions. Oh, what is this? Mission, draw a cute schoolgirl. Result, abomination. Nailed it. The eyes take up like half its head. Not one of my best drawings. This page was dedicated to practicing the oversized eyes I so passionately loved to draw. They're not too bad. I remember thinking they were really good at the time. Looking back, they're okay, but they're nothing amazing. The shading's not too bad, I guess, if I'm trying to stay positive here. Here we've got some other drawings of kind of profiles of anime faces. Again, the proportions are pretty bad. I didn't really grasp the whole idea of how big a head's meant to be and where the eyes are meant to go, and a lot of my characters just had no foreheads. I think these drawings are meant to be of Miki, from Mark Crilly's graphic novel. Shout out to him. I used to watch his videos all the time, but apparently not even Mark's awesome tutorials could save me from my terrible drawings. You tried, Mark, but I was too far gone. Forever drawing, massive eyes, and no foreheads. It's a dark world we live in. This one's kind of interesting, not because it's good, it's obviously terrible, but you can kind of see where some of my inspiration was coming from. I was a big fan of the anime Serial Experiments Lane. It's just really bizarre, but there was something about the atmosphere of it which I really liked. There was this creepy kind of undertones to it, which I think kind of carried through with my artworks. It can be really hard when you're developing your style because when you're younger, your drawings just aren't the best, so it gets really frustrating when you see these other awesome artists and you want to be able to draw like them, but you just can't quite get there. I just want to encourage you guys to stick with it because over time, you will be able to. You can see here, I was trying out a bunch of different styles to try and find what felt natural to me. It took me a long time to actually find a style I was happy with, but 
that only comes through lots of practice. So don't get too frustrated if you feel like you don't have a style that you're happy with. I like how I spelt collector wrong here. That's a little bit embarrassing. I don't know how I passed English. <laughs> All right, there's a bit of a story behind this series. I just wanted to include it because I think it's kind of funny how bad they are. I've mentioned before in a previous video, there was this art teacher we had. She started out nice and then she just got really jaded and really grumpy. And this was probably one of the reasons. So she set out this project for us where we were meant to draw, I think it could have been anything in like eight different styles. And everyone was not impressed. They're like, we've got so much other homework we've got to do and then here's this art teacher wanting us to do so many different drawings and we thought it was just stupid. And this is what I did. It is so bad. She was so disappointed. Like, I remember going back to class and everyone had pretty much done really terrible drawings like this because no one was interested in doing it. And she was so angry. She had this whole lecture about her being disappointed in us and looking back, I kind of understand why now. It's just, <laughs> it's just so bad. It's kind of hilarious though. Now this is where things start to improve a little bit. There's a faint glimmer of a hope for me here. <laughs> I'm still working in grey lead, stubbornly doing so even though my teachers were telling me to use some colour, which I kind of wish I did because as awesome as grey lead drawings can be, a lot of mine kind of looked like they were half finished. Now I'm not trying to talk trash on anyone who does grey lead drawings because there's definitely some amazing ones. Also, charcoal drawings look awesome, and they don't have any colour. So, I don't think it's the lack of colour that makes a drawing look incomplete. It was probably just my technique. <laughs> oh god, just when I said things were looking up, this is one of my drawings. Yup, really great. Proportions still on point, I like to add. Look out for my How to Draw Anatomy book coming out next year, where you can also learn how to draw abominations like these. I thought these two drawings were really good at the time. I was like, look how much detail is in the clothing and all of that. They're not terrible, I guess, but still grey lead. Still look half finished. The blood is coming. This is where it all began. Look at the technique I used to use. But, to be fair, this was only done with a ballpoint pen. I didn't have any Copics at the time. Speaking of Copics, this is my first ever drawing using Copics. I had a really limited amount of them, and I bought the original Copics instead of the sketch Copics that have brush tips. So my earliest drawings, it was actually really hard because I had to use the chisel tip or the really fine point. So it's really hard to get smooth blending. So there's a pro tip, get the sketch ones or the chow ones, not the original ones. That first sketch was a warm up for this drawing of Ichigo. I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out. Obviously, if I redrew it now, it would be a lot better. But for one of my first drawings with Copics, I think it wasn't too bad. I was probably around 18 at this stage. That sketch turned into this massive piece, which is A3, still the biggest Copic piece I've ever done. I think this took me over a year to finish. I was working on it on and off. I was pretty slack back then. I would have weeks at a time, sometimes maybe months, where I would barely draw at all. It's also worth noting that Ichigo drawing before was the first video I put on YouTube. I can't remember if I took them down because of copyrighted music I used to use, but there is an idea of how far I've come since I first started my YouTube channel way back in 2011. So there was a bit of a look at some of my previous artworks. Let me know what you guys thought, if they're worse than you imagined my artworks to be. You know, just say, Jordan, your artworks were shit. And I'll take that as a compliment because that means I'm really good at practicing. <laughs> so that's got to count for something, right? Now I'm going to flick through some of my drawings from 2016 and more recent stuff, give some advice, which may or may not be helpful, and my opinions on studying art. 
Is it necessary to study art to become a good artist? Simple answer, no. Pretty much every artist will tell you this. It's all about practicing and improving yourself. You don't have to go to classes and get some degree or whatever to be a good artist. Not necessary. The only people who tell you that are the teachers, which is understandable because they want a job, right? Don't get me wrong, I've got nothing against studying art, and for some people it's really beneficial. So you have to weigh up what works for you, if it's worth the investment of money that it's going to cost to study art, or would you rather teach yourself? And like I mentioned earlier, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, and that's a really cool resource you can use to learn online. I went to university and studied animation, and what I found, I've got nothing against it, I learnt a lot, but a lot of it I learnt in my own time. We'd get projects and a lot of the stuff the techniques would have to use in those projects would have to go home and learn it from some website and then apply it. So I just got thinking, well, what's the point of me paying so much money for this when I could learn all of this stuff at home? The resources are there, there's everything you could possibly need to learn on the internet. You just have to be willing to be dedicated and manage your time as best as you can. Another thing I like about Skillshare is the project aspect of it. So you can take these classes, draw your own version, so take what you learnt from the class and do your drawing. So I think that's really helpful for a bunch of people who don't really know what to draw. You can just follow along with the class. And when you're done, you can upload it to a public gallery and get feedback for it. And that is really, really helpful. And it's one of the big reasons why I love making YouTube videos so much, because not only do I get feedback, but it motivates me to keep drawing more as well, because I've got a schedule where I gotta get videos done. It just becomes a really good cycle where I don't get art block because I'm constantly moving forward and just progressing. I'm not stagnating thinking about one drawing for too long. I definitely recommend for you guys who wanna improve, you have to put your artwork out there. Whether that's on social media, using Skillshare, wherever it might be, put your artwork out there get feedback, and it's just going to really help you improve. I can't stress that enough. In this day and age, you have to be putting your artwork out there if you want to get people to notice your work. The last thing I want to say in this video is to practice. Have fun with it. It takes time to improve, but I promise you, if you stick with it, you will. Don't get too caught up in the art supplies. I didn't get Copics until I was 18. So I just worked with what I had before then, and when I had the money, I invested in art supplies. So that's what I want to encourage you guys to do. If you're interested in learning some art online, check out my promo code for Skillshare, where you get two free months of access to more videos than you could possibly watch. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Subscribe for more content and follow me on Instagram. I'm always posting a lot of cool stuff. That's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and thank you for all the support. It really means a lot. I've got lots more cool videos on the way, so stick around for that. And like always, I will catch you guys next week in next week's drawing video. challenge. So I'm going to start out using these pencils to set down the base and then no more pencils. Just these guys. So I've got a kneadable eraser and then for all the details I've got an electric eraser. I could make a joke about girls being familiar with this sound but I won't because that's inappropriate and I don't make those types of jokes here.